Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page where I do this daily live stream, or I should say nearly every day live stream, um, all based on the card, uh, the divination card drawn in the morning. And uh, that card helps us to understand what energy is flowing that's most important for us to know about today for our highest good um, and our soul growth but it also sparks a, a spiritual conversation. And that's the part that I just love, um, to have this conversation with those that are um, a part of Star Nation's community. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's insightful and it's fun. <laughs> so how can you beat that, right? And so uh, welcome. And uh, today, is, today is Monday, uh, April 29th. Yikes. <laughs> We're right at the end of the month. Um, and I have to say that it's cold here. Um, it wasn't, it's not as cold as it was yesterday. Yesterday when I got up, it was 29 degrees. And that's, it was six o'clock in the morning. And today it was 39. So, you know, it's a, a wee bit warmer, which is nice, but um, you can still feel that cold coldness, that crispness in the wind. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so, you know, and it's been raining, sprinkling on and off all day. Um, and I keep saying to myself, my new mantra, April showers bring me flowers, right? As long as it doesn't bring snow, it's all, it's all good. It's all good. So um, before we get rolling too far down the road here, I would like to like and share um, our live stream. And uh, I invite you to do the same. You know, and I say this just about every day, don't I? And, and those of you who, who uh, come and, and uh, are in the chat room every day, you know the reason why we ask. And so that's so that other souls, it's easier for them to find us. If they're looking for the information that we're, we're happy to share, um, if they're looking for a spiritual community, um, if they're looking for that kind of vibration that we carry at Star Nations, it's a little bit easier to find us because we end up in the newsfeed a little bit more often, right? So I'm, and we know that Facebook likes likes, <laughs> it likes comments, and it's and it likes us to share. And so um, I'm going to share it over to my uh, newsfeed, and just so that my friends know that I'm I'm live streaming. And we're going to invite them to, to join us. You know, and if you can do that, you can share it to your newsfeed. You can just share it with one friend if you want. That's good. Maybe a friend that you don't um, see very often or in, aren't in a lot of contact with. And so sometimes that's just uh, a nice way of saying, hello, I was thinking of you, right? And so I'm going to post this. Here we go. Turn down my sound. There. Now, let's see who's in the chat. It feels like Gromper Room, doesn't it, sometimes? <laughs> I swear I was going to bring I was gonna bring a mirror up with me one time. <laughs> and I know I'm dating myself, but, you know, there's, there's many of us who, who remember Gromper Room, right? Yeah. Let's see. I got to scroll up. Um, it looks like Stephanie has been busy posting all kinds of stuff for us. And gosh, we're busy. <laughs> I'm still scrolling. Oh, hey, there we go. We got Christine's in the house. One of my sisters is in the house. Hello, Christine. It's always good to have you here in the chat room with me. Andrea's here too. Hello, Andrea. Good to have you here. And there's Rochelle. Hello, Neshi, she says. And I'm saying, hello, Rochelle. And she is saying that she's grounded and she's shared. Thank you so much, Rochelle. And also, thank you for the reminder of um, being grounded, right? And so, um, you know, we've been, we've been uh, talking about this and doing this since December. Um, and I think that we're, let's see, that would be January, February, March, 
April. It's four months. We're heading into our fifth month about talking about grounding and the importance of it. And so um, I think by now, those that have been doing their grounding nearly every day, if not every day, um, could probably attest to the difference between being grounded and, and being ungrounded um, and what the, the flow of their life is like when they're grounded, right? Um, and so if you haven't grounded today, um, take a moment and, and go ahead and do your grounding. We're not going to start the cards for another minute or two here. Um, so if you haven't done that, that'd be a good time to do this. Hey, Polly Joe. Hello. Good afternoon to you. I hope you had a good weekend. And yes, that's true. Isn't it, Christine? Hoping that she's feeling better because we certainly miss you. <laughs> and Pat's here. Good afternoon, Pat. And uh, Polly Joe is saying that she's starting, starting to feel better. That's good. Well, you came off another big weekend, and I know that you had plenty of help coming in to assist, and uh, and so you got through it. I see you in the chat room. <laughs> at least, at least you're maybe laying on the couch or laying in bed and listening or watching, watching the the live stream. It's good stuff. And I'm just going to check real quick here on my phone. There we go. All right, so. Um, today, Monday, 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 today is all about the magazine, the May issue of Star Nations magazine. I had to do a, a few things um, for the Sound Weavers book this morning. Um, but other than that, it has been all about the magazine. Um, trying to get all of the articles and the photographs and all of that prepped for layout and um, Rang uh, I feel like a, a, a wrangler. What is that cowboy term, isn't it? Um, when you're trying to herd, you know, <laughs> I have a couple of stray con uh, contributing writers that we're, we're trying to track down and, uh, and, and kind of corral a little bit and say, where's your article? Because we need it today. <laughs> um, and so, you know, those kinds of things. And so I'm hoping, crossing the fingers, but by the time I go to bed tonight, all of the prep work will be done and it will be in the hands of the elves over at Elf Elm Publishing. They do our layout for us. Um, and I call them the, the elves with magic because they make things look really, really good. And so that's what I've been uh, really busy with today. Um, George, George is trying out his new puppy daycare today. Um, I tell you what, I don't know if he has this or not, but I certainly had the separation anxiety this morning. It was hard to leave him there um, because there was only two other dogs there by the time we got there, and they were much bigger than him. And uh, But, you know, the handler that's there, she's a trainer, and um, we're getting to know her. So, you know, I had to, I had to say, okay, I'm going to leave him. And Paul called me to find out how I was doing on the way home, and and I said, I'm not that far away. I could turn around and go get him <laughs> because it's, it's that's defeating the purpose. <laughs> I know. I know. But, you know, um, yeah, I'm sure he's just fine. It's just my stuff, you know, have to get have to face that one. Rochelle says, uh, still can't get PayPal for the book. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. We're going to have to um, give uh, Rochelle a hand. I think what I'll do after the show, and I've got to talk to Mervyn after the show. Um, I'll try to fit it in. Okay, Rochelle, we'll see if we can give you a hand with that. I'm not sure exactly what more I can do, but we're going to figure it out. If nothing else, I'm tenacious about that stuff. Hey, Julie Hedges is here. Hello, Julie. Good to have you here. Yep, big boy getting bigger. He's 69 pounds, 69 pounds. And when we had him at Tractor and Supply on Saturday... No, that was a fun time. Um, his original, very first trainer he ever had is the was the coordinator, the facilitator for that outing. And um, we get out of the car, and you know, and we start walking up, and and she goes, "Oh my God!" She goes, "I first saw the lab," and I'm thinking, "I don't have a lab on my list. Who is coming with their lab?" And she goes, "And then I saw you get out of the car." And she says, I realize, oh, my God, that's George. He's so big. <laughs> the last time she saw him, I think he was um, 35 or 38 pounds, something like that. 
and um, about um, about six months old, five months old, something like that. So, yeah, so he is getting big. And when he when he when he decides he wants to sit on you, you definitely know it. I call it being trampled. <laughs> he doesn't do that hardly anymore, but on occasion, he still thinks he can he can come up and jump on my lap. That would be a no. <laughs> that would be a no. All right. So the very first card that came today is this one. North Shield. Now we've had North Shield before in the last month. And it's all about wisdom and gratitude. Wisdom and gratitude. Yeah. I like that white buffalo on the on the image, don't you? With that blue background. Yeah, meaning spirit. Spirit. Wisdom and gratitude. Let's talk about that blue background for a moment. Um, the blue background. Um, and, you know, Jamie Sam, she pulls quite a bit of um, information and, um, yeah, information from the Osheti Sakoin, which is the great Sioux Nation, right? And, um, and but she her background her tribal affiliation is the Seneca which is they're completely on linguistically they're completely different um, tribal nations okay um, the Osheti Sakawi um, in their language it's what they're, the the linguists call a Suian based language and um, the Seneca the Seneca their indigenous language is a um, Algonquin based language. Okay. I know. <sighs> All right. So that sometimes means that uh, culturally um, they do things a bit differently because the language is always connected to the culture. Okay. And there's kind of a rule of thumb is that when, if the language dies out, the culture does too. Okay, so there's always, um, it kind of goes in waves, in waves about the Renaissance. And right now we're in a Renaissance with tribal languages right now. Um, I would say in the last 10 years, okay, there's been a resurgence of learning um, your indigenous language, which is kind of cool, right? Well, when we get to the culture stuff, um, the color blue that Jamie Sams and their artists use on these cards reminds me so much of um, the Ho-Chunk and um, some of the belief systems around um, when somebody passes away, when they walk on, um, and how the physical body is taken care of um, for the funeral, okay? Because... I got to tell you, there's a lot more significance in ceremony to a funeral than there is to a birth. <laughs> Much more than a marriage, you know. Um, I used, I, I still get a lot of um, questions about, you know, um, traditional uh, tribal weddings, and it's like um, in modern day, um, that's pretty much pretty close to Hollywood style kind of stuff. Um, but in in the old days, in the old days, the the, the age of my parents, um, you yeah, know, not so much. I mean, you chose who you wanted to be with, and you were with them, right? You had children with them, you you had a life with them, and that was it. But the funeral um, arrangements were, and their ceremonies are much more in depth, right? And so that color blue, when one of my uncles passed away, when he walked on, and I was helping my my auntie with the arrangements and such, and uh, talking with um, the spiritual, the spirit leader um, of the clan. In the Ho-Chunk Nation, they have a clan called spirit, the Spirit Clan. And that clan is the one that um, makes the arrangements for the funeral rites, okay? And, um, and so he was, he was, uh, 
telling my aunt exactly what the things that she needed for the funeral. And so I'm there taking notes for her because there's no way she was going to remember any of that. And he said, you have to have blue cloth. And he said, you know, it's like I felt like I was raising my hand in class. You know, it's like, excuse me, but does it matter what color blue? And he said, well, a, a brighter blue is better, is better. Kind of like sky blue, but, you know, more... Um, more brilliant, I guess. And so um, I ended up getting that that this shade of blue, this shade of blue for the, the material. And it wasn't, they didn't need a whole lot. What they needed was um, a four by four square, four inch by four inch square. And I didn't, you know, I didn't know what it was for because you know, I've been around, you know, the, the Ho-Chunk funerals before, but I've never been that involved with it. And what they use that for is to put the tobacco in. And it's the tobacco that um, the spirit takes with them um, in their journey home. And so it's like, <laughs> I know this is kind of irreverent, but... Um, it's kind of like giving them cab money, right? Transportation money. Their, their train fare or their bus fare or something. Um, and so because the, the spirit, the story goes, the spirit is supposed to use that tobacco to be able to, to uh, pay for their way through. Um, it's that energy exchange, right? But that color blue was very significant. It had to be a that color blue. And uh, the Seneca, I know that they believe in the blue road, which is the blue road is the, the road of, of the spirit. And in the um, Ojibwa, in the Potawatomi, the blue road is also about spirit, but it's our, our earth walk here. It's the one where we, we learn all of our, our life lessons. It's all, all the bumps and the bruises along the way, right? <laughs> yeah. It's how your life kind of plays out and the choices that you make. Um, and then, you know, everything that we learn from that, our experience leads to that wisdom. And it's that wisdom that we share with our community when we walk the red road, when we, when we go home to our community, um, to be able to share um, our wisdom, our experience with our community. Right. So you can kind of see how just even that color blue prompted a memory for me today. It's like, um, you know, and the, the north um, is the place of the ancestors. The ancestors. That's where we get the wisdom. And when we, we um, tap them for advice, when we connect to them, we should also have gratitude for them, right? When they help us out. And with this, they actually place the star nations in the north as well. They also have um, the placement of the star nations. Those that um, the star beings um, are in the north as well. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get caught up in the, the uh, chat here. Bahi, Bobby's here. Hi, y'all. I did get my PayPal to work. Uh, Ma and child, first day of school separation. I know. I know. I bet you anything, you know, Georgie was probably good to go, right? Um, it was me watching him, I, and I, I finally had to turn away. <laughs> I had to turn away and walk away because these other two dogs are so much bigger than him. Um, and so I, I just had to walk away and, and have some faith in the trainer, right? Julie says, can't wait to see him. I know. He can't wait to see Auntie Julie either. Um, and she's saying, glad to know about the renaissance of the indigenous languages. Yeah, uh, it's been going on for a while already. Um, you know, they're, they're in, there was a time not too long ago where um, there weren't many fluent speakers. There was only a handful. 
And um, in the Potawatomi Nation, especially here in Wisconsin, um, there was there's only two people who can tell the traveling story, the story about um, the going home back to spirit in, in Potawatomi. There was only two. And so when my auntie uh, walked on, we couldn't get one of the elders to come because of the weather. We, we had a snowstorm. And so he couldn't, because he had to come from um, uh, just north of Green Bay. Um, yeah, Forest County. You guys won't know where that is. Um, but it, it's like a, maybe a four hour drive or so um, coming west, right? And he's he's in his late 80s. And, you know, it's like, no, we don't want to have an elder on the road during a snowstorm. That's not, that's not good. And so... Um, we did hear the story, but it wasn't told in, in, in the language. It was told in English. And that was actually the first time I'd ever heard the full story because I don't, I don't know enough of the language to follow it accurately, um, the story when it's spoken in, in Potawatomi. So that was the first time I'd ever heard the whole story. And uh, yeah, so, you know, it's a mixed blessing, you know, it's a mixed blessing. Uh, do you have any info about, no, I don't, about the Choctaw? No, very little. I don't know that much about them. You know, Rochelle, there, did you know that there's 568 federally recognized nations in, in the United States? 568 federally recognized Native American nations here. And there's many, many more that are not federally recognized. They might be right, recognized by the state, but not by the feds. And, um, and so I, you know, my knowledge is like about this big of other nations. <laughs> I know my own pretty well. Um, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot. Yeah. Indians. Hmm. Yeah, actually we're moving, we've moved away from that word. It's gotta be at least 30 or 40 years. Yeah. My mom still uses it. And she'll start telling me about talking about somebody, about something she's seen on television. And she'll use that, you know, the word Indians. And I'm, I'm in my mind, I'm thinking East Indian. And so, and she's talking about Native Americans or First, First Nations, you know. And so it's it's really a generational thing. It really is. But uh, the word Indians, we're, we're really moving away from because it's a misnomer. It's a misnomer. It's... Um, you know, because that poor guy, Christopher Columbus, he was he was a lost man. <laughs> he thought he was in the East Indies, in the islands. Yeah, when he came ashore. Yeah. He missed it by that much. And uh, and so yeah. That's why it, that's why it's, it was being changed. She said, I thought it was a long shot, not concerned about asking questions. Okay. All right. Oh, don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. No, don't be sorry. It's an it's a it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to share information. Yeah, and uh, you know, and to understand, right? It's like what we said yesterday with those cards. You know, it's about the talking stick, right? And that um, the sacred point of view. It, it's just giving you some information and some background to it, so maybe it expands um, your your understanding, right? Yeah, because otherwise, how do you know? How do you know? If you're not Native American, how are you going to know that? Not unless you're an anthropologist, <laughs> a linguist that, that studies Native Americans, you know? Yeah, you're not going to know that. Julie says, that's awesome, 568. Yep. But it's also sad that they're the First Nations here first, but having to be recognized. I know. Oh, yeah. Been through that one, too. Um, yeah, because in order for in order for, for a nation to be recognized, they have to meet certain cri uh, federal criteria. And that's passed down through the Bureau of Indian Affairs from the Department of Interior. They never moved uh, Native Americans out of the Department of Interior. When we were first placed there, it was when we were taken to reservations. And reservations in the very, very beginning, um, you know, we talk about the relocation, they were actually um, prisoners, prisoners of war. 
And so they were being placed in these federal, federally owned property as prisoners of war. Yeah, because there's treaties. And all these treaties that were signed, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a big legal kind of description, actually. Um, yeah, that gets really deep. That's a whole show in itself in a, in a different way, <laughs> a completely different way. All right. So, but you know what? It kind of connects to um, the North Shield. Let me, let me read you the poem because you know how much I like Jimmy, Jimmy's poems about the North Shield. She says, North Shield, sacred place of the elders, in gratitude I sing your praise. Sacred buffalo, white as driven snow, hold my heart until the end of my days. Right. In other words, you know, I'm going to come be with you when I'm an elder. Yeah. You know, and... Being an elder isn't necessarily isn't necessarily meant because of your linear age, you know. In many respects, it has more to do with um, your wisdom base, your experience, and what you're willing to share and to help other people. That's an elder. Um, there, there are other people who are. Um, I heard this phrase during. Um, the water protection movement um, when it first started, right? And um, many of the younger people were calling um, some of the older people oldsters, not not elders, but oldsters, because um, they really didn't know much about the ceremonies, didn't really know much about the culture. Um, they weren't really great role models. You know, some of them were, were just getting cleaned up from drugs and alcohol and that kind of thing. And so, um, although they 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 were there to lend a hand, right? Um, and so there, that was a big debate during that time. What is an elder, and what constitutes an elder? What does that mean? And um, listening to a lot of points of view on it, um, I came out of that with the feeling that it's not necessarily your chronological age. It can be but not necessarily so. Um, yeah, it depends on um, what your experience is and what you're willing to share. Yeah. Yep. So, <clears throat> so it does kind of tie in with the North Shield, right? Jamie writes that, um, she says, there are three roads to the North Shield um, and that they're walked many times, and each path is tempered by the fire of experience. And each path is tempered by the fire of experience. And so there's three symbols of the North Path. The first one is listening, that by listening, you, you come to know wisdom. And the second one is through proper use of the truth, forgiveness and humility. And that's another way that you can gain wisdom. That's the proper use of truth, forgiveness and humility. And the third one is the, the third path is um, about gratitude and prayers, being thankful. And it's also through this path that you that you can know um, wisdom. So listening the proper use of truth, forgiveness, and humility, and also gratitude and prayers of thankfulness are the three paths to, um, to the North Shield or wisdom. Yeah. And then she talks about how in the North, the North Shield, and that the North Shield Another way to say it is spirit of the north or medicine of the north. It's the uh, direction of the north, right? And she says that the sacred path of universal wisdom also has to do with the ability to accept the unusual or bizarre with grace and understanding. And the reason is, is that she, she writes this 
is because she experienced a, a council in spirit um, where there were many star beings there and they looked different. They didn't look, you know, like a human would look. Um, and so at first it was rather startling to her and she realized somewhere around that uh, experience that even though they may look different, they may speak differently, um, that that's just surface stuff. It's the things that are underneath. It's what they had to share. The information that they came willing to share, wanting to share, wanting to be of service and to be of help. You know, that was what's more important than what they look like on the outside. She says, I found, I found that uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and that all races of our universe are ready to assist us. Hmm. The revelation of the teaching of the North Shield is that North is at the top of the medicine wheel. That is the place of the ancestors. Beyond the north of that wheel is the south or the beginning of the universal medicine wheel. Like great links to the chain that all that connects all of the great mysteries creatures, we transcend the links one at a time and travel each wheel, consistently evolving in unified oneness. Remember that there is no limitation when you reach the place of wisdom. The secrets are no longer meant to be kept from those with ears to hear and eyes to see. See? And I think that is the key to what it means to be an elder, is that willing to share um, and offer that wisdom and for those that are have the ability or the willingness to see and to hear, they get to be the ones that um, benefit from that elder's sharing, right? So the application of the card, the application of the North Shield, some type of wisdom is coming your way if you have chosen the North Shield card. You are now being asked to show gratitude for these new understandings in order to continue the growth process. Wisdom is one way in which you can experience the natural order of the universe and how it applies to your life. She goes on to say that wisdom is an inner knowing that cannot be traded, sold, or stolen from you. Knowing is truth that has been experienced in your life. The North Shield tells you that you have learned a lesson and derived from it a sense of self that will serve you the rest of your life. The successful completion of this lesson should be marked by prayers and thanksgiving or acknowledged in gratitude. In so doing, you'll have complete, completed the cycle, I'm sorry, the circle of the sacred hoop and honored the source of that truth. Remember that the gift of wisdom is in the heart of the recipient and remains alive as long as it's honored as a blessing. Yeah. So, for, and I would imagine that every single one of us, right, that we've all had some sort of experience that when we got on the other side of it, we had this kind of aha moment about why that had to happen in a certain way and what you gained from it. What kind of wisdom did you gain from that experience, right? That is one of the benefits of a life lesson. That's one of the benefits of going through uh, some of the hard stuff, challenging stuff that life provides to us. But I know that when you're right in the middle of it, you're certainly not thinking about this part. <laughs> you're, you're, generally speaking, you know, um, you might be, um, this one, one client told me she felt like she was clawing, clawing her way out of, you know, a deep pit. Um, 
another person told me that uh, she felt like she was um, underwater and trying to get to the surface. When you're in the middle of those things, you don't think about, oh, when I get on the other side of this, this is good. I, I wonder what my gift is. We're just trying to get out of it, right? Um, we're trying to survive it. And really that's our mental mind. That's our mental mind. Yeah, the part of us that really enjoys the drama and I'm sorry to say it, but you know it's true. There's aspects of um, what we go through that that feeds that part of us. Yeah, even though we may say we don't like drama and we and we we avoid it at all costs, you know, we'll walk away. Pretty much, we do. Yep. Yeah. When you're doing really well and you're grounded and you're centered and you find joy in your life and um, things are going pretty good, right? It's easy. It's easy to, to walk away from the gossip. It's easy to walk away from the drama. It's when we're going through that dark night of the soul, it's when we're clawing our way out um, that we don't see that part. <laughs> We don't, we don't see it at all. And when somebody even mentions it to us, it's like, you know, they don't know what they're talking about. They're not going through this. Yeah. And I can talk about it because I've been there a couple of times. You know, when you get through with the, the, the second or third pity party, and, and and you're you're saying I I'm just tired of being sick. I'm just tired of being tired. Um, when is this going to end? You know what what else do I have to do to stop this? Yeah. It's in that surrender. It's when we finally stop trying to control all the lovers. And um, you know, and and turn turn it over to spirit is when it starts to calm down, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Mervin's here. Hello, oh. hello, Mervin. Good to have you here. Rochelle is going. Yes, I know, I know. It's not. Um, it, you know, many times we make it much more complicated for ourselves. Now, I'm not saying that that's 100% across the board, right? Yeah. But when we're, we're in one of, those, one of those times when, man, nobody can feel sorry enough for you but you, <laughs> you know, um, when we're in that, position it's really good to be able to call on friends who can who can help you see the forest for the trees again you know to to remind you of certain things you know to help you with tapping to lead the tapping to get you out of it to move that energy out um those close friends who will remind you about did you ground have you when was the last time you grounded or remind you of all the tools that you have at your fingertips, right? Because sometimes we're just lost in the spinning of all of that. Yeah. But it is true that on the other side, when you make finally make your way to the other side of it, and you have all of that experience, that you survived it, and you have all of this experience that really is your wisdom that how how many people could you help with with that information a heck of a lot right a heck of a lot so that's your wisdom that's the wisdom coming out of the north out of the north from the ancestors because they've already lived through it they've lived through it and when you start to, to help others with the wisdom that you gain, you're on that good road. You're heading from the south to the north. 
you're heading to um, the your community and also to the home of the ancestors. Yeah. One of the things I liked about this one that I, you know, from the very first time I ever um, read this card is um, is that she includes the star nations in there with our ancestors, right? Um, and that our ancestors are always there for us. They were there even before we were, <laughs> before we even were a thought of theirs, right? Um, it's because they survived that we're here, all of us, not just some of us, but all of us, that our ancestors survived one thing after another, you know, starvation, um, genocide, um, you know, all, all kinds of stuff. They survived for us to be here. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Mervyn says, I seriously got grounded today. Just spent an hour on blocking drains. Oh my goodness. Yikes. That's a, that's a lot of emotion to deal with too. A lot of water. Hmm. All right, so the second card that came today is this one. Counting coup. Counting coup. We've had this card like a couple times each week from the from the, from um, April first, it's about victory. It's about victory, right? You know, counting coup, and I've explained this a few times, but counting coup is really an act of courage and bravery. It's about facing your opponent and coming as close as possible to them to touch them and survive, right? Yeah. And in the old days, our, our ancestors, the way they counted coup, you know, was about either, you know, getting really close to their enemy to literally touch them or to, to take something from them, something that, that they um, held, held dear, like, you know, their wife or their horse, horses, um, but in modern day, you know, who, who is our most fearsome opponent? Our nemesis. Who is that? You know, personally, I think it's our shadow self. And every time we count coup, come close enough to touch it, to, to understand it, to heal an aspect of that and to release it. It's counting coup. It's a victory. It's a victory. And when we do those things, guess what? <laughs> we're, we're, we are um, learning a life lesson and gaining our wisdom. So it's interconnected. And so to have the courage to be able to, to face that aspect of yourself um yeah and 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 face what what is it there for what does it represent mm -hmm. how do you heal the trauma um how do you release anything that no longer supports you with it yeah and so it frees up a huge space too because you've been spending a whole lot of energy on it <laughs> And so when you can heal it and release it, it frees up that energy that you spent um, dealing with it for who knows how long, you know. For my dad, it was 70 years he was dealing with something, wouldn't let something go that his sister did when she was 16. <laughs> it's like, and I think he was uh, 13, 12 or 13 at the time. Yeah. So he carried that around with him for over 70 years. Weighed him down, I think. But you know, that's that's what I'm talking about is that we get to to learn from it and gain our wisdom by counting that coup, by facing our fiercest appoint, opponent, our shadow self. You know? And it's a victory. Doesn't matter how big, 
A victory is a victory. Mervyn says, I got, oh, got read that one. Darn it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I need to snort some sage. <laughs> Ouch. I think, <laughs> I think it might be better if you smudged with it. Or made a tea. You can make tea from it too. <laughs> but I don't know. I think that might be a little, a, a little, <laughs> yeah, that could be a little difficult, I think. <laughs> Sorry, so sage. Although, although there is essential oils too. It's just not the sage that we're thinking of, like, you know, the bundled sage or the loose leaf. They, there's also um, essential oils. So maybe it isn't so far-fetched. <laughs> Maybe it's not so far-fetched to snort some sage. Yikes. Ow. That's what I'm thinking. Ow. All right. So when we're counting coup, I'm going to mark my page here. When we're counting coup, we're gaining, we're gaining wisdom. We get to know ourselves a little bit better, too, because we were actually able to use our courage. We were brave. Coming close enough to your opponent to actually touch them. That was, that was the major, major coup, right? Because don't forget, that opponent's trying to hurt you. <laughs> So, and so counting coup is, is, was a very big deal. You know, we've looking at the people in, in this chat, in the chat room, so many of us have been working for years, years on our healing, you know, um, facing that shadow self, um, Learning that running, ducking, and hiding from it doesn't work. <laughs> doesn't work at all. And so, you know, to be able to just do it as soon as something comes up, right, is the best way to deal with it, in my experience anyway. That counting coup. And the thing is, is that we're not doing it by our, we're not doing this all by our lonesomes either. We could call on our ancestors for assistance, for help. We can call on the star beings for assistance and help. Counting coup. Now the North Star, the North Shield is about wisdom and gratitude, being thankful. Hmm. Not that you have to type this into the chat, but here's a question, because it's kind of a personal one. And remember, this is a public forum, right? <laughs> is When was the last time you, you counted coup on your shadow self? When was the last time you counted coup on your shadow self? You know, because we're learning all the time, all the time. There's not a day that goes by that we haven't learned something. Yeah. Polly Joseph says feels very relevant lately. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You know, that part of us that that shadow self, you know, because we we, we deal with our ourselves in that way in layers, right? In layers. And I do know something for sure is that when when we finally heal and release and we're complete with it, it's when we've worked through all of our bodies, our physical, our emotional, our mental, and our spiritual bodies. 
and when we've been through all four with a situation is when and we've completed them we've moved through them that's when we're done that's when we're done with it and gathering gathering all of that experience and all of that wisdom that we just gained hard you know it's cherish it <laughs> you know embrace that um because you worked really hard for it you were you had courage and bravery to face it because there's 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 many many times many times tried to ignore it didn't want to go there you know act like it's not there It just that just means that when it comes around the next time, because it will, maybe in another way, another form, maybe different players, but it's really underneath it all, it's the same thing. And the next time it comes around, it gets it gets more energy behind it. There's more um, more to it. It's more of a bigger challenge. Why? A lot of reasons, but one of them is because we won't deal with it. But we ruminate about it. We spend a lot of energy trying to ignore it, hoping it will go away. <laughs> and it doesn't. It won't just go away. We literally have to do something about it. Yeah. Bobby is saying, uh, LOL, Mervin. in all fairness, then, how do we deal with others that choose never to be accountable so we are not the only ones being true? Well, see, that's that's the sticky point, isn't it, Bobby? Because, you know, we can only really be responsible for our own side of the street because life lessons, they're two-way streets. The, the other person or people in that um, agreed to play a certain role for us, right? But in their conscious um, and earth body self, we can't make them responsible for anything. We can only take care of what was what's on our side of the street. And so when we do count that coup, when we do do the work and the healing and the releasing and... Um, and when we do that, right, we we clear off some debris from our vibration. And so we get to, to get a little bit closer to our original vibration. A lot of times what happens is that our vibrations just don't match anymore. And so we're near miss, right, to, you know, really far apart. Um, and eventually what happens is that those people tend to drop out of your life. unless you try to keep them there then that's a whole nother a whole nother set of stuff yeah so we really don't have any responsibility over them we can we can only be responsible for our own actions or our own inactions christine says i've been doing a lot of looking within the last two months and trying to heal and let go i know i know Yeah. You know, I think what the hard part is sometimes is that when we're really honest with ourselves is that there's an aspect of what we're trying to heal and let go that still feeds us. You know, even though maybe we want to say that it doesn't, there's an aspect that still feeds us. And a lot of times what it's feeding is our ego. It's not feeding our soul, it's feeding our ego. And I'm only talking from experience. Because <laughs> once I surrendered and realized, oh my God, okay, all right, all right, all right, this is all mine. This doesn't, this, I have to do, deal with this piece. And I have to be honest with myself about what, it, what my ego is doing here. Because our ego is going to be, me. oh my gosh, I just saw a skunk. I think it was a skunk, could have been a cat. Um, 
And so, <laughs> and so um, it kind of blew my concentration. So we, we are only responsible for that piece. And I think the hardest, the, the challenging piece is to balance the head and the heart, isn't it? Is to step out of that drama, even though on the surface we say, I'm not in the drama thing. I'm not anywhere near it. There's something about it that feeds us. And what it is to put your thing, counting coup on it. You got to put your finger on it and say, that's it. Over there in the corner, come here. I need to talk to you. Yeah. Hmm. Mervyn is saying that is their choice. It's not for us to choose for them. That's correct. All we can do is try to understand them and be there for them should they choose to face their demons. Yeah. Yeah. Supporting them, and sometimes that support is in prayers and from a distance. And other times it's it's right there with them. Yeah. You know what I find is difficult? It's a very fine line in my experience is when when to let go and walk away and kind of wash your hands of the whole thing and say, okay, I'm done. Um, or to stay with it or hang with it so you can work it through and work it out, you know, so you can sit down and actually have a conversation about it and to face it together, right? And I have to say, every time I've offered that to somebody, <laughs> they've never taken me up on it. You know, I because I just think that it would strengthen the relationship, you know. But you're right. You're right, uh, Mervyn. You can't. You can't make them do anything. All you can do is offer it and keep the door open. Um, and at some point, and only you know this, is when to close the door, right? Yeah, to me, that's the difficult part. That's the that's the challenge, is that fine line. Yeah, boy, this has gotten deep. I love these conversations, though. Andrea is saying, I also have been working on healing after the death of my mother last year. Healing from childhood hurts. Seems a long road. Oh, I know. Oh, Andrea. You know, um, I shared with a friend of mine not too long ago, um, she was kind of talking about her own child, right? And hoping that she was doing good by him and um, not really doing, you know, making decisions that's going to hurt him in the long run. And, and I said, you know, I said, all you can do is your very best from your heart, because I can tell you one thing just from my observation and from being a child myself at one point is that it doesn't matter what your parents do. They can do, they're doing the very best they can with what they had. Right. Is that no matter what they did, we would still be sitting here trying to heal something from our childhood. <laughs> Cause no, nobody gets out of their childhood without, without having to deal with some some aspect, right? Mm. And not having that parent there to to work things through with, you know. Um, and even if they are here, because I have one here that d doesn't want to go in certain places, it's like I don't want to talk about that. Uh, that's already done and over. That's history. I set it aside. <laughs> yeah. But you can't make them do it. All you, all you can do is is be available when they're ready to, you know, and and maybe and you have to choose for yourself. Is that something that you want to do? Yeah. Bobby is saying all these things that make us lovable, imperfect humans. Yes, it is. And you agree in green. Yeah, exactly. Is that I think we grow from it. But it's it's knowing when to say when. It's knowing or sensing when to let go 
and say, you know what, I've done everything I can possibly do. And now it's just time to let go. I, I don't want to put my energy on this anymore. Right? Yeah. That's where I think they talk about forgiveness. Right? And it's not really something that you have to even face the other person with either, is to get them to apologize. Right? Is really about that forgiveness, that forgiveness work within yourself. Um, that that to forgive them and to forgive yourself. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so much fun being human, isn't it? As two leggeds, we make things complicated. I did. I do know that whenever I do that, when I make things complicated, I have to sit back and say, okay. I'm out of balance with this. My my ego is is doing a number here. We need to step back a little bit and take a look at this. You know, what part of this is feeding my ego? And is it out of balance? Because if it's out of balance, let's put some of the heart in there and and get this thing balanced out, right? Easier said than done, but at least I know the formula. <laughs> All right, so these are the two cards that came today. And really, it's about our gaining our wisdom and that we're not alone in it. We can always tap our tap into our ancestral wisdom. Yeah. And having the courage to do it, right? Having the courage to do it. So, you know, about whatever resonated with you um, in our in our chat today um, is to embrace it. That's my suggestion. Whatever felt good to you, what resonated with you is to embrace it. And then watch, see how the energy unfolds around you today and where this information could be helpful. Um, and maybe, you know, you're actually participating in it, direct participation, or perhaps you're the witness. Because in either case, it's a good thing. Because either way, you're learning. Yeah. And if it didn't resonate with you, don't worry about it. It's okay. You're not hurting anyone's feelings, especially mine. You know, there's always tomorrow's cards. You never know. You just never know. Or maybe it was just even just one word or one phrase that kind of made you go, huh, really? Okay, let me think about that one. Really, that's all we're doing, right? All right, so, um, hey, we're starting a brand new week here at Star Nations. we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. Um, now, Polly Jo shows we have replays for you because she, she's still convalescing. She's still getting better and building her strength back. Um, and so uh, we have a replay for um, Chakra Sessions and Soul Connections. That's Tuesday and Wednesday shows. Um, and we'll get those um, uploaded for you probably afternoonish, And so you guys can can tap into the um, soul or uh, chakra sessions into the information about the chakras and the healing meditation. And for soul connections is um, to be able to do the meditation again, or even listen through the cards again, because those are some pretty awesome stuff going on in those cards too. Um, and so those are for her shows this week. Um, my show on Tuesday night at 8 p.m., um, Communications from Home, we're going to be doing the um, Unity Breath Meditation together. I'll be leading the guided meditation for that. We haven't done that in over a month together. So um, that's kind of special, I think, to come to get together and raise the vibration to love, right? Um, so we're going to do that on Tuesday night, um, Wednesday, and then Thursday, Thursday is Connie's show. Connie um, Vodder, Sheer, Sheer Vodder, sorry, Sheer Vodder, um, her show, Spiritual Mysteries of Life, the first Thursday of the month at um, 8 p.m. Eastern time. So it's a new day and a new time, right? And um, I forgot what she's going to be talking about. I know that she was talking about Spirit's Choice. Yeah. Oh, shoot. But anyway, she's one of our elders, and I will get that information and share it with you tomorrow during the live stream for tomorrow's show. Um, 
I'm trying to think of what else is new. I'm just working really hard on the magazine. We're going to get that done for you guys. And, and I think you're going to like this May issue. There's a lot of good stuff in it. A couple of different recipes. Good stuff. All right. Well, and everybody, you're very welcome. Andrea saying thank you. Your good advice. Uh, deep stuff, I know, Rochelle, right? Right. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow, Tuesday, for the live stream show and group card draw. Okay. And Baba Mina, that's Potawatomi for until we see each other again. Love you guys.